Warning. Although my content is usually family-friendly, Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney is a game that has been rated T by the ESRB rating system, and as such, will contain blood, language, suggestive themes, and violence. Viewer discretion is advised. This episode is like the episode that I've been waiting for since the beginning of this Let's Play. It's sure to be a hoot! Sure to be a swimming old time. It's, it's sure to go swimming. Why, why is that guy so obsessed with swimming anyway? It's his hobby. He okay, likes swimming. Okay, but I have never seen him like, oh, I, I don't know. I've never actually seen him swim, so. Yeah, no duh. Anyhow, Rise from the Ashes, final day, trial ladder. So this is the last trial period, and I don't <laughs> think there are any more to be continued in the rest of the case. Oh, well then. So let's start. Let's go. February 25th. 1206, District District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 2. Sorry, Edgeworth. I didn't mean to get you in trouble. Hmm. Don't worry about it. This is my problem, not yours. Hope I'm not interrupting anything, pals! <laughs> oh, guess I am. I'll come back later. Poor Gumshoe. Oh, Detective Gumshoe, what is it? You've got a lot of nerve, pal, making a detective runner all around all while I'm duty. And to top it all off, you call me here? I've seen happier people at funerals! He said that before. Yeah. I take it Lana's having you run errands again? Let me tell you, this is the last time, pal. Here, she asked me to give you this if it's to, uh, to you if there was a break in today's trial. What? Evidence law? Edgeworth was talking about this just the other day. Oh boy. I'm sure you know the two rules of evidence law, don't you, right? Rule number one, no evidence shall be shown without the approval of the police department. Is that right, Mr. Wright? It seems so. Well, you could at least try to study some evidence law, really! The chief prosecutor also wanted me to give you a message. A message? She said, if you're planning to take him on, you're going to need this book. Him. I guess I'll need to give this book a thorough read. Securely slipped evidence law into your pocket. Doesn't look like that book will do you any good now, though. Well, let's check. I have time. Evidence for you. law from Miss Sky explains the two rules of evidence law. Touch check for details. Rules for submitting evidence. Rule one: No evidence shall be shown without the approval of the police department. Rule oh, two: well, we're screwed. Unregistered evidence presented must be relevant to the case in trial. Oh. We're well, we're screwed, because we have, like, all this stuff where it's like, Uh, I we, stole, we it stole it from, from your office! <laughs> yeah. That's a problem. All that's left now is the chief prosecutor's sentence. That's where you're wrong, detective. Huh? Haven't you figured it out yet? Why I'm still sitting in that prosecutor's seat, despite all these allegations being thrown at me? Mr. Edgeworth, the real trial today hasn't begun yet. Oh, yeah. What?! What else is there left to do? Your credibility's been all but ruined with this forged evidence you were unaware of. Emma Sky found out she unwittingly caused a man's death, and now you're telling me you want to do more? You've got to be kidding me, pal! Speaking of, where's Emma? You're missing the point, Detective. Lana didn't murder Detective Goodman. She merely stuck a knife into his dead body. That means the real killer is still out there. What? And we're going to expose him no matter what it takes. This case has hurt too many people. It's time to bring it to an end. February 25th, 1152, District Court, courtroom number nine. The court will now reconvene for the trial of Miss Lana Sky. Mr. Edgeworth? Yes, Your Honor. The inquiry committee is planning to impose harsh penalties for your actions. Thank you for the news, Your Honor. Yes, well... <coughs> normally this is where the prosecution calls forth a new witness. But, er... Uh, <coughs> this isn't easy to say. You see, there is some concern that Mr. Edgeworth may have, uh... Struck a bargain. You think I may have manipulated the witnesses. I didn't say that! It's just, you see, everyone has been talking, and... <laughs> Very well, Your Honor. I have a solution. A Mr. solution? That being the case, the prosecution will allow the defense to call for all further witnesses. What? 
But there's never been a case example! Undeniably, this is an unusual arrangement, but a very effective one. It would prove that I haven't struck any deals with the witnesses. Hmm... Well, Mr. Wright, what do you say? Nah, I don't know. Unbelievable. Edgeworth has found a way to continue the trial. Very well. The defense accepts the prosecution's proposal. Sweet. Then it's settled. The, uh, defense may now call forth the next witness. Mr. Wright, you do realize that this is your last chance. If you call the wrong witness, the trial is as good as over. Oh, maybe we need to call- oh, The okay. defense calls. The time's finally come to bring out the real murderer. Oh, okay, so we can pick- <laughs> Mike Meekins! No, he's already been on. We need to call Goodman. <laughs> it appears I've overestimated you, Mr. Wright. Huh? For a moment, I actually thought you knew what you were doing. <laughs> Mr. Wright, this court has long since tired of your questionable antics. <laughs> I still don't have any concrete evidence, but judging by the direction everything seems to be pointing, there's another person even more suspicious. Alright. Damon Gant. The defense calls Damon Gant to the stand. D damon Gant? What does he have to do with anything? Just bring him up. As the defendant's partner two years ago, Mr. Gant has first-hand knowledge of the crime. I feel we should hear what he has to say about it. Yeah? Hmm. He's like, I was swimming! <laughs> As luck would have it, he should still be in the courthouse. He would also be the least likely person to have been manipulated by me in any way. Wouldn't you agree, Your Honor? Very true. True? Alright, Bailiff, please escort Mr. Gant to the stand. He makes a run for it, and he's like, RUN! <laughs> he murders someone. Uh, hey, what's up? Witness, please state your name and occupation. What is this? Some kind of practical joke? I was just on my way to lunch! What a problem. Your name and occupation, sir? Worthy, are you sure you want to do this? Yes. Your name and occupation. So, you want to play hardball, eh? P please, Mr. Gant. Fine. My name is Damon Gantz. I'm the acting chief of police. The acting chief of police? Now then, Chief Gantz, the court requests to hear your testimony. Oh, righto! What's with the grim face? First, let's clear up this SL9 incident. Oh, you mean that time when Lana's sister murdered that prosecutor? Wow. Personally, I think it's been made pretty clear already. There are still some things unaccounted for. Oh, like what? Like the role you played in all of this. Son, either you're very brave or very foolish. <laughs> you are aware, of course, that a police chief has all kinds of weapons at his disposal. But you can't bring them into court! Weapons? Sure, take my testimony, for example. I don't have to give it if I don't want to. What? Is that true? I'm afraid so. The chief of police has the right to refuse to testify. What? Okay, what if you were chief of police and you murdered someone? You'd just be like, da 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 da. I well, don't have to do anything. Of course, such an action carries with it certain risks. Don't worry, I'm not here to hinder your trial. Just remember, if this turns out to be a big waste of time, don't say I didn't warn you. Eh, okay. Very well. The witness may now begin his testimony. Thanks. Witness testimony, yeah. SL9 incident. Alright. As I recall, Neil and I were questioning him that day. To make a long story short, we slipped up. That power outage didn't help either. What? This is skipping everything! When I went to my office, I found Lana there. Apparently she had already arranged the crime scene. As you can see, I had nothing to do with the forgery. You just skipped Five steps. So <laughs> that's a problem right there. Five steps of what? Okay. No, he was like, well, we were talking to this guy, and then we screwed up. Power went out. This happened. Oh, and then I found Lana. Like this is like. He didn't. He doesn't want to dwell on the fact that he screwed up big time. I guess. Yeah. Hmm. Is that when Dark was arrested? Him? He was lying on the floor, unconscious. <laughs> Wait.
When Emma sent Neil flying, it seems Dark bumped his head. I see. Everything seems pretty clear-cut. If the police chief has the right to f refuse to testify, then I'd better hit him hard and fast. I mean, but refusing to testify would have implications, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. As I recall, Neil and I were questioning- HOLD IT! As I recall, a ceremony was held at the police department that day. Yes, that's right. I guess you could say I'm a workaholic. After winning his award, Neil was all fired up, too. That's probably what spooked Dark and made him run away like that. How old is the dude? Who? Uh, Dan. It probably isn't important, I wanna check. 65. 65, okay, so... Two years ago, who's a detective? Mm -hmm. And then he's like, well, I'm, I'm 55, 65 or whatever, I'm gonna become the chief of police. I mean, if he's been in the business that long, then yeah. Like, Do, does it take a while to become a chief of police? I, I'm sure you'd have to be like at least in your mid-30s before you'd be able to Well, sure, but I'm chief. saying like, you're already that old that like, could you really stay chief of police for very long? Well, keep in mind, like, Angel Star was like, yeah, Gant was like the best. True, okay, okay. I was just checking everything. Was the defendant Lama Sky also present in the room? I don't quite remember. At the very least, she wasn't there when Dark ran for it. To make a long story short, we slipped up. Hold it! You skipped a fox steps there! Yeah. So the two of you ran immediately after him, right? That's right, but Dark made it to the elevator first. Shut the door! So Neil and I split up. He went upstairs and I went downstairs. I guess you could say... He got lucky. Not what's, that lucky. What's this about a power outage? Oh, that! The elevator stopped all of a sudden, and I got the shock of my life. Well, probably not as shocked as Neil when that knife went into his heart, though. Uh, <laughs> That's not funny. Uh, oh, it's just gallows humor, right <laughs> Oh my gosh. Could you tell us what you saw? It was a shocking sight. Neil and that serial killer were lying in a heap on the floor, all tangled together. Dark was also lying collapsed on the floor? Yes, apparently he hit his head and was knocked out. Next to them were those two poor girls, Lana and Emma. Lana was cradling Emma in her arms. Looking back at it now, she must have already known what her sister had done. Well, yeah. Apparently she already arranged the crime scene. How can you know that? Because of the victim's body. It had already been moved. So that means... You found the body near Lana's desk? That's right. I think you said earlier it was my suit of armor that really stabbed the prosecutor. How'd you have a suit of armor that sharp? Well, uh, he's, he's in for all of the <laughs> realist things. <laughs> yes. Anyway... As you can see, I had nothing to do with the forgery. So you're saying that the forgery had already taken place by the time you arrived at your office? That's exactly what I'm saying. I can understand how Lana must have felt, but moving a body and hiding evidence are inexcusable no matter the circumstances. Is that how it really went down? No. Staring at the witness won't do you any good, Mr. Wright. If you're going to stare at anything, you'd better be off staring at the court record. Worthy, worthy, always the smooth talker. But which piece of evidence ties Gant to the forgery? Lana did admit to forging evidence, but that can't be the whole truth. He hid two things in his yep. safe. Yep, somehow I've got to link Gant to the incident. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're lying, dude. You had a piece of the vase in your safe. You claim you had nothing to do with the forgery? But I'm afraid that is a claim you cannot back up. Explain yourself. Several pieces of evidence were found in your office. Take this jar, for example. That's the blue badger you showed us earlier. A piece of this jar was discovered in your safe. Not only that, but the evidence list I presented earlier was actually found inside your desk. It was found where? You see, Chief Gant, these articles of evidence uncovered in your office 
are both concrete proof that you also played a part in the illegal investigation. Chief Gant, what's the meaning of this? Oh, here's a defense attorney who may even rival Worthy. So you admit to it then? That you were involved in the forgery? Who, me? Or do you mean you? Me? Why would I have anything to do with that? Well, you were the one who snuck into my office when you found the evidence. Sure, but... Prosecutors aren't the only ones capable of forging evidence, you know. Defense attorneys can do so, too. Hey. Isn't that right, Raito? However, Detective Gumshoe was present during the investigation. Where have you, my boy? Not even detectives are exempt from the law. Rest assured, Dick will receive his due punishment. What? What? Come Detective Gumshoe's salary drops and he forever going to pay him to work! <laughs> yes, well, in light of the detective's presence, please give us your testimony regarding these pieces of evidence found in your office, and their relation to the forgery that took place at the crime scene. My, my. Kids these days no longer know how to put two and two together. Witness testimony, evidence, and forgery. Let's see, what was it now? A jar fragment? And a list? For all I know, you could have planted them in my office. Except, um... Anyway, you can't prove when those pieces of evidence were discovered. If they were found after Doc was convicted, then they're worthless. There's no reason I'd participate in the forgery. Rearranging the crime scene wouldn't help me out in any way. Unless you were there. <laughs> hmm, Mr. Wright? Yes, Your Honor? When investigating the crime scene, you should have been more careful to observe protocol. You do understand that I am the chief of police, right? There will be consequences. Ugh. Indeed, I believe I will press charges, so you won't make the same mistake again. My apologies, chief, but would you mind waiting until tomorrow for that? Today is... well, you know. Alright, Uji. In return, though. I know, I know. That place, right? What? Huh? What are these guys? Telepathic? <laughs> are they like going out for burgers afterwards? Like, hey. Oh, heck yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, this is the thing that I've been wondering. Because, like, Lana was like, oh, I have to cover up this evidence that my sister killed this person accidentally. If you're 14, you accidentally kill someone. I'm not saying, like, uh, yeah, like, you, you were self-defense. Yeah. Would you go to jail for that? Jail in this series? Yes. Yes? Executed? No. Well, no, you wouldn't go executed, but I don't know. Like, what about real life? Real life? If you're a minor and it's justified self-defense, I'm not sure, actually. I'd have to look that up. Okay. Because I'm like, if it's really that, like, I feel like it would be pardoned, at least. Because there are oh, a few I'm, especially, that go to jail. Yeah, and especially given the circumstances, if it's like, serial killer about to kill you, you kill them, it's like, I don't think you'd go to jail for that. No. Well, yeah, Vasquez, that whole thing. She didn't go to jail. I don't think. She went to jail? She didn't go to jail, I thought. She absolutely went to jail. I thought she, well, but she was self-defense. For sure. It was self-defense. I mean, she did, but, like, kick him into but the... But also, like, she committed a bunch of crimes while testifying, and also she's not a minor. Okay, that's true. Okay. Alright, anyways. For all I know, you could have planted them in my office. Oh, ho, ho, ho. I'd appreciate it if you'd stop making these ridiculous allegations. Yes, you do have a point. You wouldn't have the guts to do something like that. Wow. What? I'll have you know, back in the day, I once broke into a cattle ranch and tipped... <laughs> Mr. Wright, what are you saying? Was he in Texas with Bambino? <laughs> anyway, you can't prove you didn't carry in the evidence, can you? If you do have proof to the contrary, you're going to need it later. Later? What are you talking about? What else? I'm talking about when your fingerprints are found. Yes, if they're found inside my safe, they would prove your investigation was illegal. Ugh. I've never faced anyone as slimy as this guy. I don't know. I don't know, Red White's probably slimier. Red White's pretty slimy. Va uh, Von Karma was pretty slimy. What do you mean by that? <laughs> to Von Karma? Who's the worst? This is what you no, say. This guy, this guy was, is just smart, I feel like. It has to be. So. This is all purely hypothetical, of course. But suppose I did place those items in my safe. Such an act wouldn't 
necessarily constitute forgery. Yes, it would! It's part of the evidence! If concealing evidence found at a crime scene isn't forgery... I'm not through speaking yet, Mr. Wright. It all depends on when the evidence was discovered. If they were found after Dark was convicted, then they're worthless. Are you saying that this jar fragment wasn't discovered in the initial investigation? It would appear not. After all, it wasn't listed in the evidence list. For all we know, it could have suddenly materialized the day after Dark was sentenced. Oh, and wouldn't that be convenient? Right. The Chief is talking about a possibility. So long as you can't rule that out, your remarks, however clever they may be, will only succeed in wasting time. Tell me something I don't know! Come now, Mr. Wright! Think about it. Notice how he's now calling us Mr. Wright, not Righto. Mm -hmm. It's because he's sweating. How can you look at me in the eye and say that? Because I'm innocent. Remember? Who was it that murdered Neil? I'm not sure I care for the word murder here. But in the end, the person responsible for Mr. Marshall's unfortunate demise was Emma Skye. Well, now do you see? Rearranging the crime scene wouldn't help me out in any way. Really, Chief Gant? At the very least, there is one very large benefit you've reaped from all this. Oh, I wasn't aware. What is this benefit? That would, of course, be the position you have, Chief of Police. Oh. The resolution of the SL9 incident secured your promotion to Chief. That in itself is sufficient motive. <laughs> oh, 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 that's a good one. Huh? Do you really think I'm that incompetent? What do you mean? Even without that case, I was already in line to become the next Chief. The resolution of SL9 merely sped up the inevitable a little. Is that true, Edgeworth? Yes, he was going to be made chief anyway. Okay. Gah! Be careful when pointing that finger, or you might wind up being the one pointed at. Yeah, every time you point the finger, 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 finger. <laughs> <laughs> No one could probably understand that. <laughs> Thank you, art teacher of ours. <laughs> so that means there's only one possible motivation for you to commit forgery. If you didn't do it for yourself, then you did it for someone else. Be silly, Worthy. You know me better than that. There are only three people I look out for: me, myself, and I. Wow, somebody's the there. Only it's out in the open now. Narcissistic. Archie, would you mind if I changed my testimony a little? Yes, we would. <laughs> By all means, please do. I only care about myself. <laughs> Wouldn't be anyone's accomplice if there wasn't anything in it for me. Well, but there's so many things that could go for him if he mm -hmm. he would have complete control over everything. Yeah. Nothing in it for you? Sorry, but the only person I care about is yours truly. That girl, Lana's little sister, was it? If you think I felt sorry for her, you'd better think again. You're right. You don't feel sorry for anyone. Be tough on crime and tough on people. That's how I was raised. Dang. You seem to be lax enough on yourself, though. Ho ho ho! Oh, that's a good one, Worthy. Hmm. Could there have been something in it for him? Given his selfishness, would he have helped somebody out? No! <laughs> Chief Garrett is incredibly selfish and would never do that! <laughs> ah! I can't think of how it would help him! That means... He wouldn't have helped out anyone. Relax and take a deep breath, Mr. Wright. Try to think outside the box. After all, that's what you're good at, isn't it? Think outside the box. I never thought I'd hear him tell me that. The question isn't who would the chief help, it's who would ask the chief for help. If someone did that, he'd be sure to find a way to benefit from that person. Yeah, after all, he's just throwing around money right and left. Mm -hmm. Want 50 bucks? Here's 50 bucks, go to the movies. <laughs> That's one expensive movie theater! <laughs> no, I'm saying like you... Like, That's one like movie and dinner, yeah. that kind of thing. Oh, dinner and movie. It appears the defense has nothing more to say. Chief, would you please repeat your testimony from the beginning? Alright. 
point out accomplice. Oh boy. True, you might not help out anyone for their sake. But if it would benefit you, you might decide to assist someone. Mr. Wright, it appears you're positively determined to portray the chief as a nice man who likes to lend people a hand. That's not what I mean! <laughs> Very well, I'll ask. Who is the person you believe Chief Ganton may have helped forge evidence? Definitely Gumshoe! <laughs> right ho, my boy, the look on your face. It's almost enough to motivate even me to help you out. Wow. I hope you understand that it's not a compliment. Chief Gant would have wanted something in return. He must have wanted to be able to blackmail the person he helped. Alright. <laughs> Obviously... Well, you probably know who it is. I don't think I do... The person you believe Chief Gant may have helped forge evidence. Oh, Lana? Yeah. Chief Prosecutor Lana Sky? The, the defendant I believe it's quite obvious in light of the circumstances. Emma Sky fell victim to an unfortunate series of events. Who would want to help her more than her own sister Lana? And as for Chief Gant, he would also have a reason to help Lana if she asked him to. That reason, of course, is self profit. Self profit? What do you mean? After the SL9 incident was resolved, Lana Sky was appointed Chief Prosecutor at the Prosecutor's Office. The person who arranged this job change was you, Chief Gant. B but how would he profit from all of this? He would be able to use the Chief Prosecutor as his puppet. Essentially, he would acquire unchecked authority over all investigations. Do you mean to tell me that despite the Chief's formidable appearance, he plays with puppets? Oh wait, you must mean puppet as in someone forced to do his bidding! <laughs> Never mind! <laughs> oh, Chief. Admit it, Chief. You assisted Lana Sky in forging evidence. Your motive to appoint her as Chief Prosecutor so you could control her. Right, ho, my boy. You have quite an imagination. Let me ask you something. What? Do you have any proof of this? That I controlled Lana? For example, is Lana testifying that I've done such a thing? Because... Oh. Lana. She's keeping quiet to protect Emma. There's no way she'd testify against Gant. I'm afraid without any proof, this all amounts to nothing more than mere conjecture. Unless... That is also what happened in this incident. This incident? Er, uh, which one would that be? Of course I'm talking about... The murder of Detective Bruce Goodman. The Chief Prosecutor has been acting strange throughout this entire trial. Almost as if someone has been controlling her. Worthy, you'd better watch your tongue. I wouldn't want you to get hurt. Just what do you mean? What he means, Your Honor, is that Chief Gant is involved in the murder of Detective Goodman. Not only that, but the Chief is now making Lana take the rap to cover up his involvement. What? 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 With several T's. Oh yeah. Order! 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 I said order! Mr. Wright, you... you can't be serious! I'm huh? Not serious. This... This is an affront to the highest ranking officer in our law enforcement agency! To accuse the chief of police of blackmail and murder? That's... Uh, <laughs> impossible! Meanwhile, Chief's just like, duh, 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 I stand straight. Your Honor, I was merely reiterating what Mr. Edgeworth said in easier-to-understand language. It's too late, Mr. Wright. There's no turning back for us now. It looks like he's the one who's decided to go through with this. Can you prove this, Mr. Wright? That the Chief, a high-ranking officer of the law, is involved in this murder? Good question. Uh, yeah, we had that whole conversation with Lana. Regardless of his rank or title, Chief Gant is just a man. What? There's the videotape in the... in the room where she was being... where you can, like, talk with the glass, and then you can I be, like, talking. I don't think they can record private conversations. Oh, you can That's, that's against the law. 
The question is, is he a criminal? I believe the evidence will tell. I see. Alright then. Show us this evidence that ties Chief Gant to the murder of Detective Goodman. Just remember, it better be good. Oh yeah. Do you know? What ties him to it? To Detective Goodman's murder. The... Lit... Wait. Go to the list of numbers. ID card record. Seven, 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 seven is him, so we could do that. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know if that would instantly tie him, though. Um, uh, yeah, let's try that. Alright, well, first... Well, Chief? So long as Mr. Wright is tossing out fiends regardless of their relevance, mind if I toss something too, Aji? This shoe should do nicely. I'll chuck it right at you. You always were quite the joker, weren't you? Oops. Looks like I got it wrong. Don't oops me, or I'll be the one throwing my shoe next! I know it's hard with all that's gone on during this trial. But try to think back to what happened in the evidence room four days ago. Now that he mentions it, we did find something out in yesterday's investigation. Something that proves Gant entered that room. I was right! Looks like he wants another one of your shoes, Aji. I see. Alright then. Was I right? Yep. Yay! This is the part I've really been looking forward to. Woohoo! This is the ID card list. Yes, the one that shows who entered the evidence room on the day of the crime. There was one ID on the list we couldn't determine the owner of yesterday. 7777777. Sorry, but there's no way you can prove that's my card number. It's your number. What? How do you know that? The safe in Chief Gant's office requires a code to open. A seven digit code. Seven digits? You don't mean. I broke into his safe! I'm afraid so, Your Honor. The code was 7777777. The same as the remaining ID card number on that list. Chief Gant, you entered the evidence room on the day of the Okay. Yeah! When, when I hear the corner music, this is exactly what I remember. <laughs> he's moving his fists. Oh, yes. Let's finish him. And then he's like, oh, nope, never mind, I'll be proper again. Order! Order! Chief Gant, what do you have to say? Nothing. The defense's search of my office was in violation of regulations. And I will demand Mr. Wright be punished to the maximum extent of the law. But right now, this court demands an explanation from you about the use of this ID card. Chief Gant, so you admit it? You entered the evidence room on the day of the crime? What about it? I'm chief of police, whether it's the evidence room or the bathroom. What's the difference? I go where anywhere where I want. Right. Tell me, when you entered the room, were you alone? I always go to the bathroom alone, <laughs> as I do with the evidence room. Detective Gooden wouldn't have happened to be with you that day, would he? Uh, of course not! Why would he be? I hadn't seen him in days! Really? You hadn't seen him in... Days, Chief Gant, I'm afraid you've just undone yourself. On that day, you had to have met with Detective Goodman. What do you mean? This trial's purpose is to determine Rana Sky's guilt. No, it isn't, Your Honor. This trial's purpose is to determine the truth. If Chief Gant met the victim on the day of the crime, then we need to determine one thing. What transpired during that meeting? Also, why the heck did he go there? In that case, Mr. Wright, I'm going to have to ask you for evidence. Show us proof the victim met with the Chief Gant on the day of the crime. Isn't it the same evidence? No, that just shows that the Chief used his card. But it's the same time. It says 420 and 420. No, it doesn't. That's the only 420 on there. Oh, 420 and... Show us proof he went to meet... The victim Chief, Chief Gant on the day of the crime. We can try it again if you want. Was he getting punished? Ooh, he's in trouble. Like with the organ? I don't know. 
Um, <laughs> you played my organ without telling you. Uh, we can try that again if you want. Maybe. Uh, okay. There was... He was trying to find his ID card. Right. So maybe he was trying to meet with him to find the ID card? That's possible. I want to try this first, though. No, there's got to be something more solid than this. On that day, Detective Goodman had to go see Chief Gant. Sorry to interrupt your mumblings, but the court is waiting. Oops. Why don't you come meet with me tomorrow? Perhaps we could write up your letter of termination. Regardless, you did see Detective Goodman that day. You're right, though. Detective Goodman lost his ID card on the day of the crime. Or, to be more accurate, Jake Marshall stole it. So Detective Goodman filled out a lost item report. He would have had to give that report to the Chief of Police. Yet, you are in possession of the report. Which means you can't be sure that if he filed it. He filed it. How do I know, you ask? Because he needed to enter the evidence room that day. He needed to? Yes, to transfer the evidence out. Oh. Detective Goodman took the form to you, Chief Gant. Then, you accompanied the detective to the evidence room. I accompanied him? There's no other way the murderer and Detective Goodman could have entered the room. Hold on. Let me guess what you're going to say next. I, the Chief of Police, murdered poor Goodman. Exactly. But wait! The Chief didn't necessarily need to accompany him to the evidence room. He could have just lent him his ID card. Who would do that? Yes. Now that you mention it, I believe I might have done something of that sort. You might have? Sorry, but that's not possible. According to the record, your card was only used once. But you showed us your ID card earlier. If you had really lent it to Detective Goodman, it would have been found on his body. Mm. No! Did he just get electrocuted? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Chief Gant, you didn't! The murder was most likely committed on the spur of the moment. No one in their right mind would choose the police department as a place to commit murder. Yeah, why would you murder him anyway? <laughs> After the murder, he, you contacted Lana at the prosecutor's office. Why else? To dispose of Detective Goodman's body. However, the victim's body was discovered in the prosecutor's office parking lot. In how my car. How did he manage to move it there? I was at the police department the entire day, you know. And everyone's aware that Lana stayed at the prosecutor's office after the ceremony. Everyone except me, it seems. Still, you're the chief of police. You have an entire police force at your disposal. Oh, so you think I just ordered an officer to do it? Hey you, take this here dead body over to the prosecutor's <laughs> office. I don't think so. <laughs> Chief Gant, you left all the evidence you, we need to prove how you moved the body to the prosecutor's office. And all this time I thought it was a useless clue just taking up space. How could the chief have moved the body? Mr. Wright, show us this evidence. To move the victim's body, Chief Gant used this. Do you know? Screwdriver? <laughs> it's a shoe! It's a shoe! <laughs> well... I see. Maybe I'll use this later to move your dead body, Mr. Wright. <laughs> huh? And I'll help you dispose of it. Wow, Judge. Chief Gant stayed at the PD and Lana stayed at the prosecutor's office. That leaves only one possible way he could have moved the body. The screwdriver! The only problem is, how did he get him to do it? Maybe that piece of evidence really did have something to do with this case. Otherwise, it's I'll ask the you clock. again, Mr. Wright. Dude, is this? This is how he moved Detective Goodman's body. What's that? A screwdriver? But what does that have to do with this case? Mr. Edgeworth, think back to the day of the crime. What if this screw? What is this screwdriver doing here? It's here because... Ah! I was asked to go, by Chief Gant, no less. 
He told me he wanted me to keep it at the prosecutor's office. In any case, on the day of the stabbings, I brought this back to the prosecutor's office. After the ceremony ended that day, I didn't plan to return to the prosecutor's office. But you did, because Chief Gant asked you to. You mean I... I... The body was found in the trunk of Mr. Edgeworth's car. I think it's obvious what happened. I can't believe you didn't smell the blood. The body was moved by that car. Edgeworth's got a uh, scent-proof car, apparently. <laughs> Detective Goodman's body was carried in the trunk of Mr. Edgeworth's car? Yes. Unless, of course, you have another explanation, Chief. Why else would you have asked Mr. Edgeworth to carry evidence from a closed case? There's only one plausible explanation. To transport the body to your accomplice, Miss Vanna Sky. Order! 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 What's going on here? Is there no room for rebuttal to the defense's outrageous accusations? Think back to the photograph Miss Starr took at the prosecutor's office. This was not a photo of the body being stuffed into the trunk to be taken away. It was exactly the opposite. It is a photo of the body being taken from the trunk. Chief Gant, please say something! I believe... Your time's up. My time's up? Sorry, Righto, but I'm having lunch with the District Attorney General after this. Well, too we have, bad! We have to get going if we're going to make it in time for the early bird special. Too bad! You're guilty of but, murder! But the cross-examination isn't finished yet. Remember what I told you earlier? A police chief has all kinds of weapons at his disposal. Weapons? Guess what? We have bailiffs who can hold you down. Like the right to refuse to testify, I'm invoking that right now. What? That is not a right to be casually invoked. There are certain risks to be considered. So you're going to just run away after all this? Run away? Don't make me laugh, Worthy. I stabbed old Goodman. That's what you're saying, right? But if you had any conclusive evidence, you would have presented it by now. Well, I... You think I had Lana dispose of the body? If so, then show your proof and get it over with. Hmm... I'll say it again, Mr. Wright. Damon Gant is the current chief of police. This court will not tolerate any accusations against him without concrete proof. Well, Mr. Wright? Y your Honor? Do you have any concrete proof? Proof that Chief Gant murdered Detective Goodman and made Miss Sky dispose of his body? The conversation. Do I have any concrete proof? Present evidence or I have no proof yet. If we have no proof, he'll be like, well, bye, I'm going to Taco Bell. Like, you know, like... <laughs> Chief of Police can afford better things than Taco Bell. <laughs> but everybody loves Taco Bell. I don't except, like Taco Bell. I don't like it. Taco Bell is... I know all these people It's not love gross, it. but, like, it's never worth it. This they do also live in California, apparently. Japanifornia, so they yeah, probably have Yeah, they got better taco places than that. I don't know why it's called Japanifornia. I can't let him just squirm his way out of this. I've got to keep the pressure on. Yes, Your Honor. I do have such evidence. Then please hurry up and present it. Just remember, it better prove Chief Gant murdered Detective Goodman beyond a shadow of a doubt. Know what it is? It's a tough one. Little glove? No. Oh yeah, the glove is only used like once. <laughs> For like, this jam the sensor. Oh, that's it. want to try it? <laughs> sure. So, uh, what exactly is this evidence? It's proof as to whether or not it's enough to demonstrate the chief's guilt. I'll let you be the judge. But I am the judge. Oh, right. Well, what do you think, Your Honor? <laughs> I thought for a second it was right, and I was like, wait. <laughs> what I think, Mr. Wright, is it's go I'm going to be late for my meal. Guess it wasn't enough. Please, Your Honor, give me just a little longer to consider. Hmm. I'll say it again, Mr. Wright. Damon Gant is the current chief of police. <sighs> the answer is actually no. No? Okay. 
It's no use showing evidence I'm not even sure of myself. No, Your Honor. At present, I have no conclusive evidence. Hmm. See, Archie. In that case, this court is forced to penalize you for your allegations against the Chief. What? I don't gamble unless the stakes are high. It seems that Lady Luck was on my side again today. Okay, Aji, I'll leave the rest to you. He just makes a run for it. Ugh. I warned you earlier, Mr. Wright. This is an affront to a senior officer in our nation's law enforcement agency. Of all law enforcement agency! Wow! <laughs> Wah! He's starting. Lady Luck, hmm? Maybe we should have a word with her. Mr. Edgeworth? What do you mean? There's one lady who knows the real truth behind this trial. We haven't yet had the honor of hearing her testimony. A lady who knows the truth. Another witness! In the absence of conclusive evidence, the only other method of proof is testimony. But Chief Gant has invoked his right to refuse to testify. There's still someone else, one more witness, who can answer all the questions raised in this trial. Someone right in this very room. Mr. Edgeworth, who is this person? Hmm. Why are you asking me, Your Honor? Have you forgotten? The defense is the one calling the witnesses today. Mr. Wright, does such a witness exist? She may not be willing to tell the truth, but we can't just stop now. Yes, Your Honor. The defense calls forth... Lana! Damon can't! <laughs> Angel Star again! I thought we were walking the same path together, Mr. Wright. It appears somewhere along the way you got lost. You better find your way back, Mr. Wright, or you'll be left behind. There's another witness who can expose Chief Gantz in crime. One whom we've all left stand at the sidelines. Now that I think about it, there's only one possible person. Call forth Lana Sky. The defendant? Miss Lana Sky? She was in the underground parking lot at 5.15 p.m. on February 21st. Her task? To dispose of the victim's body. In accordance with a certain someone's orders. Hmm, Mr. Edgeworth? The prosecution has no objections, Your Honor. Very well. The court will now take its final okay. recess for the day. In, wow. in 15 minutes, we will reconvene to hear the defendant's testimony. This court is now in re- Hold on! Huh? Chief Gant? I thought you were going to eat! Listen good, Lana. He's talking to Lana. I don't think you need me to tell you this, but if you accept Mr. Wright's claim, there will be terrible consequences. That's right. Your sister will be found guilty. For Neil Marshall's murder. Ah! This isn't good. Of course, you never support such outrageous claims anyway, right? Just something to think about. Alright then, I've got a lunch date to meet. Can we, we just arrest him? He openly threatens someone in court. <laughs> okay, if there aren't any further objections, this court is now in recess. The other thing I want to say is that I cannot believe that the judge isn't like, Hey, the prosecution and defense are working together to try and just <laughs> uncover this dude. Yeah. Normally that'd be against John Wiley. <laughs> February 25th, 2.04 p.m., District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 2. Looks like we managed to stay in the game. Yeah, thanks to your help, Edgeworth. That chief. He's something else, eh, pals? Detective Gumshoe. Ha ha ha! I'm not a detective anymore. Oh yeah, sorry about that. Ah, uh, don't worry, I've already decided where to work now. At your office! Really? My office? That's so perfect! Sure! I'll take the place of that top-knotted girl you used to work with. No! Could he mean... Maya? Still, looks like we're all out of moves now. Chief Gant's done it again! How is it he always gets the upper hand? It's not fair he has the right to refuse to testify. No kidding. Hmm. <laughs> Settle down, right? Remember what the judge said? But Chief, that is not a right to be casually invoked. There are certain risks to be considered. Risks? What did he mean by that? It's simple. If the Chief refuses to testify, 
The opposite also holds true. This is you. You mean he forfeits his right to say anything too? Emma! Are you okay? Yeah, when I came to, I was in the medical office. I've been listening to the trial from the gallery. So she heard everything that's been going on. Um, Emma, I'm sorry for what I said before. No, don't be. It was the truth. You know, it's funny. I almost feel somehow relieved. Relieved? Yeah. Now I finally know what really happened. To think that all this time... My sister was being blackmailed by that terrible man! And she did it all just to protect me! Ever since her appointment as chief prosecutor, everyone who knew her said she changed. Perhaps it was easier that way for her. What do you mean? What do you think I mean? To follow Chief Gant's orders? She must have shut herself up deep inside. To force herself to do anything and everything the chief told her to do. That must be why she became so cold. It was all my fault. It's all because I, I murdered Mr. Marshall. Hey, don't go blaming yourself now! If you want to blame anyone, blame society, pal! Chief Gant may be able to fool anyone, everyone else with his forgery. He can't fool my memory. I remember now. I knocked Mr. Marshall into that armor. That, that armor. I, uh, I see. Well, we'd better get back. It's time for the final act. Emma, why don't you wait here? No, I'm going with you. I want to be there when Lana tells the truth. Let's go, right? It's time to end this. I thought she was going to be like, I want to be there when Gant crumbles. Oh, there is one last tea to be continued. Sweet. Oh, yeah. Every Trust me, you want to be there when Gant crumbles. <laughs> All right. He already got electrocuted, so I can't imagine how much better it'll get. Well, that's it for today, everybody. Thanks for watching, and tune in next time. It's the final episode of the Let's Play. Hope Every... you guys have been enjoying it. I, this is my favorite Let's Play I've this ever recorded. This is my favorite Let's Play I've ever recorded. Anyways, tune in next time. It's, um, it's going to be amazing. Till we meet again, have a great day, and God bless. <laughs>